Good afternoon. Are we live? I think we're live. It's funny, the app keeps changing so on the sound that it's working. Okay. Hi, welcome to my broadcast. <laughs> this is episode number 707, 707. And the topic today is, do you regard being single as a failure? Because some people do, maybe not you. Before I jump into that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also called a relationship attraction expert, which is why this is going to be an interesting topic. Um, I've been doing these talks now for over two years, which started basically now at 707 broadcasts in the news every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, and I'll give you the links for that later on, and the replays as well. Um, and they were called initially messages, messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart, and now it's called MFTM for short, because I like, like putting longer titles on. So, um, hi Jermaine, nice to see my broadcast, and thanks for all the love. And again, this is a Facebook Live, so if you're watching on YouTube wondering who I'm talking to, now you know. So, um, topic again today is, do you regard, or have, do you feel that being single is being a failure? Because some people, some people, choose relationship as an avoidance of being single. Yes, they do, amazing, surprising. Maybe you know someone like that. And the thing is that it's almost like looking at being single is somehow having the pox or being um, somehow ex um, excommunicated, extricated, maybe excommunicated from society, something that's not wrong with you, you're, you're, you're a leper, you're somehow, you know, you, you have, have the X mark over you because you're single, something wrong with you. It could be further from the truth, frankly, but I want to explain a couple of things about breaking this down because some people look at being single as something wrong with them because if you were, if you were okay, you'd be in a relationship. Especially those people who are in a relationship judge and view some people are single that way. Let's just say there's a lot of friction and judgment between some people and other people because of being single. I like to think of being single as a choice that is called freedom. Now, I'm not saying there's not freedom in a relationship. I just talk about that in my book about there's a lot more freedom in a relationship. But there's a lot of components that people look at as being better when you're in a relationship versus when you're single which are actually not even true. Because being single can be a choice. Same as being in a relationship can be a choice. For some people, there's no choice. They must be in a relationship or they're stuck being single because they can't find what they want. And that's not a way to do things. Not the way I recommend it. Yes, as I said at the beginning, I am a relationship attraction expert. I help my clients attract amazing relationships. However, <laughs> however, when I work with my clients, um, we, in, we, we interview, I interview them first because I'm not going to work with a client who's desperate to be in love because they hate being single because that's, that's not supportive. I'd rather help them learn to love themselves and appreciate themselves, which I'm very passionate about in my work, if you've seen my broadcast for the last few months, before they even think about having a relationship. My belief, yes, and this is my belief, so I'm not saying it's the right way, I'm saying it's my, this, is, this is in Barry's universe, my belief, is relationship be, should be additive to how amazing you already are. I'll break that down more in a moment because I want to go back to the pain point first before I explain the good side of things. Relationships, for some people, are the place that they have to achieve to be successful in life. There's a rule in their head somewhere, maybe taught by their parents, or maybe by society, by their peers, by their friends, by somebody else, that's convinced them that they won't be worthy and that's a whole other conversation about worthiness, or deserving if they're not in a relationship. That they must achieve relationship to have any status in the world. That if you're single, there's something wrong with you. This is pervasive in a lot of people's lives and a lot of our culture, and I want to burst that false balloon right now. Being single is a choice point. Yes, sometimes being single can feel lonely if you don't know how to be single the right way that being single somehow is pining to be in a relationship. And I've been through that myself a few times, just to be transparent. I, I have had my own dips into the place of loneliness, thinking that it'd be so nice to be in a relationship. Lately though, especially the last six months of the work I've been doing for myself and what I've been creating for my clients, I'm more, than clear, more clear than ever that I won't be in a relationship unless she's amazing. Meaning that where I am in my life, I'm doing what I love doing. I'm aligned to what I feel is aligned to my heart. I'm producing great results in, in work with my clients and with the products I'm creating for them. So I don't want to have a relationship that's going to pull me from that. 
the relationship's got to be additive or don't bother. Now, for most people, they don't look at life that way. They look at relationship as being the one thing that makes their life worthwhile. Again, that's a trap. Who you are, even if you don't believe this, is whole and complete already. Who you are is worthy and deserving already. Doesn't matter who you are, I'm just telling you this is the fact. Who you are is a person who is autonomous, who is whole, who is complete. Whether you're single or in a relationship, and that's the key. Who you are doesn't change in relationship necessarily. Some of behavior can. So, hey Jermaine, so read what you said there, sorry. Uh, cool, cool, Barry. Thanks, thanks on this worthy topic and subject this day. Definitely singleness has, has, has and had been a choice in my life. Happy to know this has always helped me to develop into the sound and conscious, conscious man I am in life. Absolutely. Yeah, same here. So, it's funny because I was just, I, I have, um, <laughs> in, in, in total transparency, I have a matchmaking service that likes to, likes to put me out on dates with their clients. It's an interesting experiment on my part. <laughs> So I was on a call with a woman today about that, one because they have different reps that work with their people. And she said to me that she actually understood when I explained to her is that where I am in my life and what I'm focusing on, as much as I'd like to be in a relationship, I, I am very clear that I won't be dating anybody unless they're in alignment with where I'm, where I'm going. Now, I'm being very particular about this because the work I'm doing in the world, if I'm in a partnership with a woman, she and I have to be doing the same work together as, as far as I'm concerned. I don't, I'm not just not interested really, I'm not, I'll try that one again. I'm really not that interested in being with a relationship with a woman who is, one hasn't done her own work and been on her own journey to become more whole and more fully in her own feminine power and authority. But also, I'm looking, I'm clear about being with somebody who ideally would be able to do this work as in speaking on stage with me, partnering with me in the work I do, because that's what feels aligned to my heart. That's my choice, just, that's just to be clear. I wouldn't feel comfortable being with somebody who works in a nine to five corporate environment. That's not what fits my, my profile. That's being honest. And so with the matchmaking service, they know that now because they didn't know that before. At least they forgot that before. So by saying that, I got really clear is that my choice points is relationship is not my top priority. Oh my God, I said that out loud. After being in this work for so many years, teaching this work for so many years, to be saying that relationship is not my top priority sounds almost like, oh my God, that's wrong somehow. I shouldn't say that. I am not my clients, to be clear. But also I'm clear that for more and more, and this is, and I'll get to this point in a second, or I'll get to that point in a second, let me finish this one first. Being, in, being able to honor and respect myself as a single person and appreciate who I am and enjoy my life in freedom, again, the freedom I choose to do that with, because there is freedom relationship, as I said earlier, allows me to choose relationship from a much more comfortable and um, unneedy, what's the opposite of that, um, detached way. It's a powerful place to be. And that's also probably one of the reasons, I think it's one of the reasons why I've been creating a lot more on my coursework recently, to help people in, as individuals. That's why I have the self-love practice and why I have the coming home to yourself pro um, program I'm launching, because both of those are helping people who are single, primarily, come into a place of self-love, self-support, self-appreciation on so many different levels that will help them prepare for a relationship. And again, if you're already in a relationship, these don't hurt you either, they'll help as well. But the thing is, for more people nowadays, the divide between single and couple, single and couplehood, being in a relationship, has a definite, um, there's a rift between the two. And so in my work with people helping to be, recognize that being single is okay, is that is that when they remember how to enjoy being single, and again with the course I've created, learn to love themselves, appreciate themselves, and all these other things, makes them a better partner when they choose to be in a relationship. That choice is what a lot of people don't have nowadays, because a lot of people are tied up to, I'm nothing if I'm single, I must be in a relationship, which is again I said at the beginning, this is this is to be blunt bullshit. Who we are is autonomous, healthy, whole beings, but we forget that somehow. We think that somebody else is going to make us complete because we think that we're only half a relationship because you complete me type mentality from Jerry Maguire. It sucks <laughs> and it's totally inaccurate. So my passion in this work, as you can tell, is about helping people be autonomous, to love themselves fully, to express who they are. So when they do choose a relationship, it is an addition to the person they already are, not filling some imaginary gap they think they have in themselves. 
There's a, reckon it, there's a book by Shel Silverstein called The Missing Piece. It's an old kid's book from way back. I read it years and years and years ago. And in there he talked about the piece that felt like it needed something to complete that. It, Della, exactly my point. Thank you for that. If it doesn't elevate my life, I don't want it. That's why I kind of said earlier, but you said it much more succinctly and poetically than I did. So thank you for that. But I did say the additive. So yes, elevate. Elevate's a good word to use. Not that you're not already amazingly elevated yourself as a person. Being single is okay. You can be elevated as a single person. But a relationship has to be even more than that to make it even more amazing. If you're looking at a relationship to fill up some gap because you're not doing what you need to do yourself, that's an error in approach. So the point I'm really making clearly, which I've said about 17 times to make it really clear, <laughs> is that relationship is not something that you need to make you something special. A relationship can be special, but who you are already is special in the sense that you are already a magnificent being. You just may have forgotten. There was, um, I don't know, it was a post I saw earlier or an article I read earlier about, oh no, it was a post I put up earlier. It's actually from Doctor Who. <laughs> it was a meme I had about we are, you know, we are, we are uniquely created from, from stardust and divinity and all these other things that makes us amazing, unique beings. No relationship is going to fix something that's not broken. So then again, no relationship is going to fix something that's not broken. And you, uh, my friends, are not broken. The trap we fall into is thinking there's something wrong with us until we're in love. That relationship is going to make us feel whole. Yet the funny thing is, I see people go through, well, not funny, but I see people go through two, three marriages and divorces, and they never find themselves because they're looking for that, they're looking for themselves in the partnership, which is an incorrect approach. Self-love, self-support, self-appreciation. I've said so many times, because I'll keep making this point and keep banging it home, as it were, is the key to being a healthy partner in a relationship. It's self-support as you're single makes you a better partner when you choose a relationship that is conscious and, as Della put it, is elevating. That's the choice that I think we all need to make because many people aren't. Many people, in fact, are <sighs> driven by the external need to be filled up from outside. A relationship is contribute, can, I believe, is a contribution from each partner to each other, but not, not a relationship that you take from each other. I mean, there can be moments in relationship to do that. That's to be transparent on that. But the choice point is that we become to relationship from an overflow, that we have somebody join us in our overflow because we are already whole and complete beings as we are. That a relationship that we join into is one that is additive to the amazing person we already are. And as I said before, you already are amazing. You're made from stardust of all things. How, how amazing is that? So if you've forgotten some of these things, watch my videos because I have tons of them out there on Facebook Live Land. And also the course I offer them, I'll put the links in the comments at the end. I did mention them earlier because when you learn how to practice self-love with yourself and fill yourself up, you become more supportive of who you are and less needy of somebody else. Secondly, with the Coming Home to Yourself course that I'm creating, there are so many self-supported practices we can do that we may forget to do. Things that we can do every day or every week, when we remember to focus things on ourselves, then we can refuel ourselves, rebuild ourselves and reconnect to ourselves in much deeper ways. Truthfully, being a better person in our lives will make us a better partner in a relationship. So I would like to think that when you do the work on yourself, well, actually I know this, when you do the work on yourself and you fill up your tanks first, you fill up your own resources first, you won't settle for less than you deserve because you now know your deservedness, your worthiness, and your value for a healthy relationship. And ideally, the other person's done the same thing as well. Because being so filled up yourself, you want to make sure you don't draw somebody to you who is lacking themselves. Because, well, obviously that's not going to work. Because you, as I said before, when you're lacking, you're coming from a place of hunger and need and taking from somebody, which is not healthy. And when you feel yourself, feel yourself when you, I'll try it again in English, when you fill yourself up first, then you become much more aware that nothing out there deserves for you to give away your power to something else. So it's a doubly useful skill set to love yourself fully so you don't need anybody else and feel, feel yourself up so you don't need like you need to take from somebody else. Actually, that's, the same, that's two aspects of the same thing. You get my point. So I think I've, I've nailed this point home more than enough times to put it through the floor. Um, but I hope it's been of use to you. I appreciate the comments and feedback, by the way. It's been very appreciated in this broadcast. This is a um, simple reminder <laughs> about self-love being the firm, foremost form of love that comes before you love anybody else and before you get loved by somebody else. So build up your own 
practice, your own discipline, your own le strength of love for yourself first before love somebody else because then you have a resource you can always rely upon no matter what anybody else does. Again, I'll put links in the comments for the self-love practice and for the come home to yourself. You can check them out for yourself if you want to join me in these, these things, get these programs, they will change your life, I believe. And also, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, this is my daily Facebook Live. In case you haven't seen it before, it's on my personal page at 5 p.m. Pacific time, um, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. I put replays out on my business page and on YouTube and give you the place where you can find those. Um, my business page on Facebook is barryselby.author. You can please like that page if you wish. Watch the replays there. Or if you want to watch it on YouTube, I have a whole playlist called Messages for the Masculine under my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. Please like my, please subscribe to my channel. And uh, you can check them out there. This is number 707. I've got a few of these broadcasts out there now and more to come. There's always something to talk about love and relationships because there's a lot of us on the planet. Um, if you have any other questions, thoughts about this, please comment below. You can do it here or if you're watching on YouTube, if you have questions, you want to send me a message over social media, you can do that as well. If you want to share it with somebody else and you feel like they would benefit, please do that as well. And again, I'll put the links in the comments. You can find my stuff. Um, I appreciate being with me as always. And I hope this has been of value to you. This is intentionally and intended to be a wake-up call, to an inspiration and a reminder that you are already deserving as a single person or if you're in a relationship. But don't go looking for your worthiness in a relationship first. It starts inside. That's my message, that's my reminder, that's my encouragement. So with that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And uh, that's it. Take care. I'll see you again soon. Bye.